Hi, so you're from Taurus. Could you explain something about who you are and what you are doing here? Okay, yes. We are actually from uh, CZNIC, which is a uh, Czech top level domain registry. In Czech top level domain registry, we do a lot of other things apart from doing just the registry. We do a lot of open source development. You might know our DNS uh, server Knot or our BGP routing daemon Bird. And one of the interesting projects that we did is uh, Turis. We originally started as a security research project where we uh, created uh, hardware to develop our software, where we basically deployed uh, kind of honeypots to people at home and we were doing research how much they are being attacked and how. We collected those data, do some security analysis. We actually updated uh, firewall on those routers automatically. Because of how we work, we did those routers uh, to be running open source software. We gave people root accounts. We provided automatic updates, not only security months, but even some feature updates. Then when word got around, people started asking for those routers. We found that those might get really popular and they don't. And nowadays we are manufacturing routers. Still, all the software is open source. You get your root account. They are running OpenWRT based Linux distribution. Plenty of open source software readily available and you can install whatever you want on top of them and do whatever you want. You can truly own the routers, make them yours and make sure that they do just what you want them to do. You have Tourist Omnia routers? Currently our flagship is Tourist Omnia router. We have our uh, board here. We could have uh, bring a router including the box, but uh, yeah, that's what you can see in the store. So we bought uh, just the bare boards because they are cooler, right? Uh, so you can see what is inside. Twist Omnia is our flagship. It has dual core 1.6 GHz processor. It has eight gigs of storage, two gigs of RAM. It can be equipped with Wi-Fi 6 or 4G in the near future with 5G. It can contain MSATA SSD and it has uh, two USB 3 ports. And because it's running Linux, you can plug in whatever device is supported in the Linux. So they are really extensible, even hardware-wise. Maybe we could show the hardware on the board itself, maybe? So this is the CPU, there, is a, there are RAM chips. Then we have uh, three mini PCI Express slots. Uh, two of them are by default occupied by Wi-Fi cards. If you have a Wi-Fi 6 version, uh, this one can be used for MSATA as well. This one, on the other hand, has a USB inside. So if you put in a SIM card and LTE module, you, get, uh, you can get uh, internet via LTE or you can use USB as a fallback. Uh, we have a two and a half gigabit SFP port if you have a fiber. And then we have a bunch of gigabit ports. Uh, those, uh, those five are actu actually connected to internal switch that can be used to offload VLANs. And uh, we have uh, two USB 3 ports that you can connect additional devices. One cool feature is that we have battery backup RTC. So your router knows what time is it, which is important. So you can check the validity of SSL certificates when you boot up. One more cool feature is we got uh, 12 RGB LEDs that you can do really crazy stuff with. They are fully configurable and uh, on, the, on some conferences, we even have tower of our routers and you can play Tetris on top of them. You said you could get internet via the SFP port if you have uh, fiber. So what, what about DSL? How do you get internet otherwise? Regarding the ESL, I know that it's uh, still quite popular in Germany. Uh, luckily, it's not as popular in the other parts of the world nowadays. Everybody is switching towards fiber. We tried several times to get DSL up and running, but we run into difficulties because there's not many companies doing DSL. If you are a small producer, you get access only to some documentation and some companies, most of the big companies wouldn't even talk to you. If we got some parts and we were able to make several DSL prototypes, but in the end, when we tested them, it didn't work that well on the long lines. Usually ISP companies uh, tune those devices by themselves to make sure that they work best. 
So our hope is that the DSL will die and get replaced by fiber as it's happening around the world and hopefully it will come soon to Germany as well. So Germany is just a bit backwards. <laughs> Sadly, yes, in some respects. You were really upfront when uh, DSL came around. The drawback is that um, now you can get awesome things from DSL, but uh, it slows down the adoption of the fiber. For how long is the uh, software supported? Yeah, that's a kind of tricky question. What we do is we maintain the same distribution for all our routers. So that means that once you buy a router and if we develop a new feature for newer model, you still get the future, if, uh, if it's technically possible. So we started uh, doing routers about 10 years ago, and our oldest router is still supported, and we don't plan to drop the support for the hardware as long as it is technically possible. So, so far, we haven't found the limits yet. And for the current router, it's based on ARMv7, so we believe that there will be many years to come where we will be able to support it. Our oldest router is running some weird variant of PowerPC and we are already running into some limits there, like uh, some of the new features that we deployed on our routers require Golang. It looks like there will be some features that will require Rust in the future and those uh, new compilers don't get backported to old CPUs. So there are some limitations to our oldest router but the basic system still receives uh, newer kernels and uh, newer libraries and complete support. So your operating system is based on open wireless router. How well does the vanilla version work on your routers? We are based on OpenWRT. We did uh, some modifications, like we are using ButterFS as our file system. We are not doing highly compressed system as it is uh, standard with OpenWRT. This gives us advantage like uh, using ButterFS snapshots so we can restore easily. And we have our own updater because we are updating individual packages and we are doing automatic updates and automatic configuration migration. We are supported by Vanilla OpenWRT somehow with some limitations. But uh, what we do as part of our development is that we are trying to push everything upstream and not just to open WRT, but uh, we are making sure that our router is well supported in vanilla kernel and vanilla U-boot. So you are not limited to just open WRT, but you can really well run any modern Linux distribution that still has uh, ARMv7 support. And for the new devices that are shipping with ARMv8, you get even more options. You can run a virtual machine on the Omnia, so how does that work? One thing that we found very interesting is that actually our router is quite uh, beefier than your typical router. As I said, we have uh, 8 gigs of storage and 2 gigs of RAM. For routing, you need much less. Uh, you can run additional services and OpenWRT does a great job in providing a lot of software that is ready to run. But some people prefer their favorite distribution and uh, the polishing bits that their favorite distribution does. So what we offer is LXC, Linux containers. Within Linux container, you can run any distribution that you want that supports this CPU architecture and deploy your own software. It's best if combined with uh, internal SSD or with external USB drive so you can get uh, more storage and you don't have to worry about damaging your internal eMMC. Apart from that, I think uh, nowadays uh, OpenWRT supports even Docker containers and I've seen even Podman package. I uh, don't have practical experience with that, but LXC is easy to use and there is uh, even a loosely control page so you can install LXC container from web UI and it will just show up as another machine on your local network and you can start using it from there. So you could, for example, run a, um, a TrueNAS or something on the router itself and then also use it as a storage device? Yeah, you can run wireless software inside LXC, but most of the software you can run even without LXC. So you can easily install Samba or you can install uh, DLNA server so you can uh, stream some movies from your router to your TV. One thing that I did was when my favorite Linux distribution was releasing new version, I ran a BitTorrent client on my router to help the to see it and to pro provide uh, up-to-date images. So, uh, well, basically, 
your Linux skills are the limits. We are trying to make it uh, less of the problem and we are integrating various nice features into our user-friendly web UI. One of the things is, for example, managing external storage. Like I said that uh, we have USB 3.0, so you can put in external hard drive. And we have in our web user interface module that will help you format it to ButterFS and even set up RAID over multiple drives and replace the drives if needed. Do you have any new products in the pipe? We are actually working on uh, two new products. One is called Tourist Omnia Enterprise. We actually have a box here. This is how it will look like. Uh, as you can see, the box is currently empty. Uh, so we got just, uh, just the chassis because uh, we currently have only three prototypes and all of them are occupied by our developers and they have them strapped into various cables and trying to make it work. Yeah, we hope to have it uh, ready and released uh, later this year. The idea of this device, it's, it's bigger than Omnia. Uh, it will have uh, six uh, 10 gigabit ports, uh, SFP, and uh, it will have eight core CPU with 1.8 gigahertz, and uh, RAM will be swappable via SODIM modules. So it will be much higher performance this thing will be targeting even more, as the name suggests, some small businesses. But uh, we still want to make it passively cooled. So as uh, 10 gig is getting more and more common in the world, we can imagine that it will be on the desk somewhere in a small office with just a few guys sitting there without any rack and without any real infrastructure. So we want to make it funless and make it possible to run it in this environment as well. Apart from that, we are also working on a new revision of Tourist Omnia, something that will have at least one uh, 10 gig port and a few two and a half gig ports. And as I was uh, saying that Omnia is really great that it's being versatile and it's uh, using mini PCI Express slots and you can exchange the Wi-Fi cards for a new model. You can put in LTE, 5G, whatever you want. Mini PCI Express is getting rarer and rarer, so we want to replace it with M2 slots for the future. So we want to get uh, higher speeds on the wire, we want to get Wi-Fi 7, and we want to swap uh, Mini PCI Express for M2 cards. Omnia Enterprise is a little bit different beast. Price will be higher and use case will be more enterprisey, but we want to have an updated version of what we have here right now, something that can be easily used at home, more affordable. Uh, maybe you could also tell us a bit about your role at Tourus. I'm uh, leading the Tourist project from the technical side. I'm overseeing uh, software teams and hardware teams, their coordination, and I'm also helping uh, sales guys uh, when they are talking with uh, our business partners and uh, I'm trying to help our business partners to figure out the best way how to use our technology to satisfy their customers. Why have you come from uh, the Czech Republic to Germany? Why we come here to Chemnitz is because this is a great event. Yeah, we love open source, we do a lot of open source, and we want to meet other people and other projects that does open source, talk with them, find their needs, and find possible ways how to work together and help each other. Germany is a great country and potentially a great market for us. We actually know that uh, when we first launched our router, it got really popular in Germany. I know that people here are really concerned about their privacy. They take privacy seriously, they take uh, open source seriously, and they worry about their security, and they are really technically advanced. So I think it's a great fit for our product. Other than new products, what does the future hold for Taurus? We now need to finish two products that we are working on right now. In the future, what we want to do with the software is bring more features to the end users. Currently, you can do plenty of things with our router, but uh, some of those things require you to be quite technically skilled. We are trying to make it uh, simpler for even average user. We have a simple application that does netflow monitoring, so you can watch what your devices are doing, uh, what's happening on your local network. We have some proof of concept of IDS integration. We definitely want to expand on that and make IDS something that even average user can do. 
without needing much technical skills. We would like to add some other security functions that's from the software side, make it more user-friendly and bring the advanced stuff that all we technical people know how to do, even to non-technical people in easy way and easily digestible way. For the hardware side, we need to get uh, to 10 gigs and get beefier hardware, either the enterprise and uh, Omnia successor, Omnia next generation. Then we will see, but uh, we already have some ideas like uh, make some simple APs that uh, can cover large houses or large offices. One idea that we had was make a small router that you can carry with you, can be battery powered and get you connected safely wherever you go. Yeah, that's uh, for the far away future. We will see what will happen. Those two devices that I spoke about, Omnia Enterprise, we've got prototypes already and we are working to make them run. And we want to update our current Omnia, which is still great hardware and still available even today. We hope that next year we might have something slightly faster, but still more affordable than the Enterprise one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So, we speak auch Deutsch and they are naturally in Tschechien to us eingeladen. And if they want to buy our router, then please look at our website. They can the router directly by us. Beauftragen.